So, it's the late 2000s. It's been 10 years since you graduated from college, and all you've done in the last decade is nothing but skating and hanging out with your friends. But one day, you decide to stop being a bum, get yourself together, and make a living of your passion. Well, that is the story of how Palace started. Palace. Often referred to as British Supreme, Palace has accomplished quite a lot in just a decade. Although the brands mostly focus on skatewear with heavy 90s and pop culture influences, it has managed to get worldwide attention and presented some of the most exciting collaborations in streetwear of the last decade. In today's video, we retrace the story of Palace and its founder, Lev Tanju. Let's get into it. What's up? I'm here in sunny London, and right now I'm doing what I always do when I'm here, rolling through the palace store and just chilling. Welcome back to a new video, and today we are talking about one of the most popular streetwear and skate brands out there right now, Palace. Lev Tanju, the main guy behind Palace, was born in London in the mid-80s to a Turkish immigrant father and an English mother. His father was a professional football player, while his mother owned a restaurant in southwest London where the likes of Jack Nicholson would visit. Although there isn't much out there about his childhood, Tanju repeatedly talked about skateboarding always being an integral part of his life in interviews. After attending college, he decided to take some time off and would just skateboard with his friends most of the time. To be able to afford his rent, he would sell skateboards on the side and get small jobs in skate shops. What started as a gap year after college turned into a 10-year break. 10 years of wandering and having fun, but he knew that it couldn't be like this forever, and wanted to make something of himself. Over the years, he met many people, and made good connections, some of which were the likes of Tim and Barry, the hosts of a YouTube channel called Don't Watch That TV. Yeah, what's going on? It's Dizzy Ross from the original Dirty Stankin, yeah, Eastside, you don't know, you're watching Tim and Barry TV, don't watch that, yeah. It was very popular in the South London grime scene, and these two offered Tanju a show on their channel. The PWBC Weekly News released a new episode weekly on Wednesday at 4.20 p.m. It was a kind of skate news show, with overdubbed audio and a chaotic edit of skating and news clips. And this would later become the aesthetic foundation that Palace still uses to this day. Another valuable connection Tanju made was with Gareth Skewis, another skateboarder and the co-owner of Slam City Skates, one of the most iconic skate shops in the world, with whom he had talked about his project of creating a skateboard company. After watching a couple of his YouTube videos, Gareth was convinced, and thus, Palace was born. The brand needed a logo and name. The name came from the places he had resided in over the last 10 years. Of course, it looked nothing like a palace on the contrary. It was the complete opposite. But it was a place where they could meet, party, crash, and they had nicknamed the apartments Palace. It was in this place that he had made most of his connections so far, and some of them included pro skaters, whom he noticed were underpaid and exploited by sponsors. It's also while looking at this entourage that he became convinced that the London scene had something special that he could offer to the world. He wanted to accomplish what his fellow Englishman James Jebbia had done with Supreme. But unlike Supreme, who was heavily influenced by the New York scene, he wanted to create something that represented London as he saw it. The logo was designed by Fergus Purcell, a graduate of the fashion school Central St. Martins, who Tanju met while hanging out in Slam City. At the time, Purcell was the design director for Marc Jacobs, and had previously worked for Stussy. Simple but memorable. Purcell designed the three-dimensional triangle logo, the Triferg. It was meant to be something slick that would pop off when superimposed over Tanju's gritty videos. Tanju then mostly filmed his video with his phone, so he needed something that would stand out despite the lower quality of the clip. And so it began. Upon its debut, the brand was exclusively sold around independent boutiques around London. The hype was picking up quickly, as Palace had unique designs that flew off the shelves. This landed them in higher-end skate shops such as Supreme. At this point, Palace was gaining traction overseas in the United States, being seen in New York and Los Angeles Supreme stores. In 2012, the brand won European Skate Company of the Year. There were a few other things that helped Palace rise in popularity. Notably, the VHS videos made by Tanju, the skate team, and their selective and successful collaborations. Palace's early projects also extended beyond skating. The brand's videos retained the grainy, lo-fi aesthetic of Tanju's early PWBC news videos and furthered Palace's grassroots, just a couple of lads having a good time vibes. 
While everybody ran to the newly created HD style videos, Palace kept using VHS. This made them stand out among others, and gave them an edgy and old school style. As mentioned previously, pro skaters, with few exceptions, are notoriously underpaid and exploited by sponsors. But now with this company, he could support his friends by giving them a fair wage and dressing them. The Palace skate team featured the likes of Blondie McCoy and Lucian Clark, as well as other well-known London-based skaters like Chewie Cannon, Benny Fairfax, and Danny Brady. The Triferg logo quickly became emblematic of an emerging generation of skaters who were excited to embrace new ideas about what a skate brand could be in the 2010s. Not only that, but also with a couple of designs by Tanju, like the Versace Medusa head logo, and a play on the Chanel Double C logo, Palace's reputation was supercharged. Palace has done numerous collabs over the years, yet unlike brands like Supreme and Bape, they seem to be very selective about who they work with. Their first collab was with Umbro in 2012, then Reebok the following year, and Adidas the next one. But in my opinion, their best collabs took place in recent years. In recent times, they have worked with Averex, a brand of leather jackets representing rave culture that was very popular in London and New York in the late 90s. The Palace and Kickers collab was not appreciated by all, but I still think it was cool and the best one yet, with Ralph Lauren, which came out in 2018. In the 50 years that Ralph Lauren had been around, the brand had never collaborated with another clothing brand, and the result was phenomenal. Palace has also collaborated with high fashion such as Gucci and outdoor brands like Arcteryx and Solomon, and Avisu, just to name a few. Although I think collabs are overdone these days, I think Palace has a good approach to theirs. In just over a decade, the brands have accomplished quite a lot while maintaining their originality and quality. A lot of their work seems influenced by their childhood and their environment. You can see it on their videos or the accessories in them. The only complaint people might have is, of course, their price. But in an era where people prioritize exclusivity instead of quality, this is far from shocking. As for the comparison with Supreme, it makes sense, to a certain extent, as they both share a lot of similarities. But unlike Supreme these days, Palace still feels original and organic despite its quick rise in popularity. And unlike Supreme, they aren't run by corporate. At least, not just yet. Just some cool kids making cool stuff. What are your thoughts on Palace? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Ring the bell. I'll see you next time. Peace!